is our second lecture of our example number one, which is the design of gantry girder. So, students, basically this is our chapter number five. So, the name of this chapter is design of gantry girder. So, let us revise how much discussed in our last two lectures. Okay. So, students, in the first lecture, we will discuss about what is gantry girder. What is the use of gantry gutter? Okay, so it is clearly mentioned that this gantry gutter used in industrial building to support our crane gutter. Okay, now the another question is what is the function of crane gutter? So the function of crane gutter is to transfer heavy loads from one place to another place within the building. Okay, so for that reference you can see that this figure if we have to move any heavy material from one place to another place then we have to use this crane gutter and this crane gutter is supported on this section and this section is your gantry gutter okay so students this is the basic function of our gantry gutter now after that we will discuss about the components of gantry gutter or the crane gutter so the whole the junction of crane gutter having four main components first one is crane gutter itself second one is trolley okay so this trolley is visible in this figure so this is trolley this is crane gutter okay third one is gantry gutter so you can see that this is your gantry gutter and at last it is your crane rail Okay, so crane rail is basically oriented over the gantry gutter section to roll our crane gutter. Okay, so this will discuss in our example number one. Sorry, in our lecture number one. After that, in the last lecture, we will discuss about which are the loads having to be considered while we have to design gantry gutter. Okay, so students. Basically, there are four types of load which we have made attention in our mind whenever we have to design for gantry gutter. So, first load is vertical loads. So, you can refer this figure. Vertical loads mean vertically downward. So, this gantry gutter is take three main vertical downward forces. So, first one is self weight of crane gutter. Second one is self weight of trolley and third one is hook capacity and the capacity of hook is considered as the crane capacity which is given in the question. So this is our first load. Our second load is impact load. Now what is impact load? So it is already discussed that impact load means whenever we have to lift any material. Okay. And then we have to put at, this, at his place of movement. Then if we are realized that they have put down, then this put down force is considered as your impact load. Third load is drag force. And drag force is also called as breaking force. And last force is lateral load or lateral load is also called as surge load. Okay, now for surge load, we are discussing two examples first one is whenever we have to start our bike and release our clutch then some jerk will be sustained okay and the second example is whenever we have to sit in train and suddenly train will start with the jerk and that jerk load is considered as your surge load okay after that these all four types of load discuss in our last lecture we will start our example number one which is the design of gantry gutter in which the data is already discussed in our last lecture. After data discuss, we will discuss up to our example number one, step number one, which is maximum wheel load. Now, you can see that in this figure, if you are seeing this is your section and this is your plan. If we are seeing any component from our section point of view, okay, so we are seeing the ahead portion, not 
to not able to see the behind portion so you can see that this is trolley in which trolley have total four wheels one two three and four similarly this is your crane gutter and crane gutter having two wheels on each end so you can see that this is first end this is second end this is third end and this is fourth end two and two wheels on both the ends okay so first of all we have to transfer our crane load to our gantry gutters component okay so our first step is to find out maximum wheel load so for maximum wheel load it means the vertical loads and it is already discussed that in the types of load which have to carry gantry gutter so it is three load first one is sulfate of crane gutter second one is sulfate of trolley okay this is sulfate of crane gutter second one is sulfate of trolley and last one is hook capacity now what is the value of sulfate of crane gutter so you can see that the sulfate of crane gutter excluding trolley trolley excluding it means this trolley's weight is not including in 200 kN now this gantry gutter is your I section okay or one heavy gutters are provided over there now if you can say that this your crane gutter is permanent structure and this is moving over a length of gantry gutter so whenever your any component is like this then you have to find out the sulfate of that component in the way in the range of kilonewton per meter so kilonewton per meter is basically our udl but you can see that in the question the value of crane gutter is given in kilonewton unit now kilonewton is the unit of point load so how to convert your point load to udl so it is the basic knowledge the unit of point load is kilonewton and the unit of udl is kilonewton per meter then we have to convert kilonewton to kilonewton per meter by dividing some length so this length is the length of crane gutter and in the question it is clearly mentioned that the span of crane gutter is 15 meter so you can see that our total weight of crane gutter is given as 200 kilonewton but we have to find out weight of crane gutter per meter is 13.33 kilonewton per meter okay so this is our udl throughout the span now point load so you can see that in this figure that our trolley is moving like this okay in the crane gutter but there is one distance and you can see that this is your gantry gutter so at which point your re reaction on gantry gutter will be maximum so when your crane or when your trolley is at this point the reaction is maximum over here and if your trolley is moving on this direction then your reaction is maximum at this point okay now this is called minimum hook approach it means when your trolley is moving up to this point your reaction is maximum at this point okay so the point load is 240 which is already discussed in the last lecture so this is your final figure now if this is your final figure then you have to find out reaction at this point and reaction at this point okay and we have to use two equal wheels and divide that reaction on the same wheel okay so students in the last lecture we will discuss up to 300.75 kilonewton now we are moving further to our step number two so our step number two is maximum bending moment in gantry gutter our second step is maximum bending moment in gantry gutter now this step is refer and use with the help of your mechanics of solids in mechanics of solid there is one method 
name of name is absolute bending moment so generally this step is depend on absolute bending moments theory in which there is one derivation okay and this derivation is derived is not possible so students you have to make sure that you have to use this statement so the statement is maximum bending moment will occur at distance b by 4 i repeat distance b by 4 now what is b b means the wheel base width so the wheel base width is given in the question as 3.5 meter so the distance b by 4 it means 3.5 divided by 4 and this 3.5 divided by 4 is your 0.875 meter okay so your bending moment is maximum when your b by 4 is the point from the center of the span of gantry gutter okay so you can see that this is 7.5 meter and from 7.5 meter center it is 3.75 now from 3.75 any of the wheel whether a point or your b point is at a distance of 0.875 Okay, so this is the figure of your step number 2. This is your 3.75 meter distance center span. This distance is 0.875 B by 4. Now, you all know that the distance between wheel base is 3.5 meter. So, this distance is 3.5 meter. Okay, so students, you can see that this span is 7.5 meter in which there is two types of load are also there it is self weight of gantry gutter and second one is self weight of rail section because rail section is provided on the gantry gutter okay so in the question it is clearly mentioned that the self weight of rail section is 300 newton per meter now Newton per meter is converted into kilonewton per meter, so it is 0.3 kilonewton per meter. Now you can see that in the question there is no any clarification regarding the self weight of gantry gutter, and it is in GTU there is also no any clarification regarding self weight of gantry gutter. So whenever there is no any clarification regarding the self weight of gantry gutter, then you have to assume in the range of 1.5 to 2.5 kilonewton per meter okay so it is the self weight of gantry gutter only now you can see that this is weight of rail section it is given in our question but if in the gtu this self weight of rail section is also not provided then you have to assume it is 0.5 kilonewton per meter okay so now let us start this is 1.6 and this is 0.3 so our total UDL is 1.9 kN per meter. So this 1.9 kN per meter is acting on a span of gantry gutter which is 7.5 meter. But this is your unfactored load. So whenever you have to design any structural component you have to find out factor load so it is 2.85 kN per meter now students this is your main figure okay now if you have this figure then you have to find out RA and RB first of all so RA and RB in which your upward force is equal to downward force so upward force is RA plus RB is equal to downward force is equal to 300.75 plus 300.75 plus W into L so it is 2.85 into 7.5 so your final answer is 622.875 now we are taking moment at A so at this point your anti-clockwise moment is equal to clockwise moment and you have to find out RB and with the help of RB you have to find out RA this is your RA okay so after finding out RA and RB you have to find out 
moment at a this point and moment at b at this point okay so load into perpendicular distance so it is 241.265 into 2.875 minus at up for this point this udl is acting as anti clockwise moment so it is w into l into l by 2 so you will get your answer 681.85 kN into meter and similarly you have to find out your moment at b point okay and you all know that this is your simply supported span and for simply supported span your both the end having moment of zero okay students so students this is the end of your today's session thank you